I'm on the run from the record labels. They came for my channel, and now they're coming after me. I live in constant fear of my life. Okay, that's not exactly true, but here's what's going on. And before I begin, let me say that I love YouTube. This is primarily a complaint about record labels with a couple of helpful critiques and suggestions for the YouTube that I absolutely love. So basically, because I'm an English professor, I post song explanations to YouTube. 97% of my videos contain nothing but me talking, maybe some subtitles, and a quick explanation of what I see in these songs. I quote lyrics, I talk about them, and that's basically it. And because I teach English classes, I do something very similar in my classrooms. I explain poems and plays and short stories and novels in my classroom. But do not tell the ghosts of F. Scott Fitzgerald or Ernest Hemingway because their ghosts will come to my classroom and revenue share me, taking part of my paycheck. <coughs> I wasn't made to be that intense. You see, one out of three times that I post a video to YouTube, a record label will claim my content, saying that part of what I made belongs to them, or all of what I made. I won't say which artists' record labels are the worst about this, because I don't want to get sued. But I understand when you're a bloated, outdated, irrelevant industry trying to make it in the digital age, what better things do you have to do than to sue and revenue share and demonetize YouTubers with 30,000 subscribers? Seriously though, the joke's still on them because even though they've claimed about a third of my videos, they've only still made probably $30 because I make nothing on ad revenue crap. But back to my point. When these record labels try to make a claim on my video, I always respond with the fair use defense because it makes perfect sense. So let's do the four factor fair use defense test provided by YouTube. So the fair use test. Number one, the purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is of commercial nature or is of nonprofit educational purposes. Obviously it's semi-commercial because I'm allowing ads to be put on it, but that should be allowable in certain situations. Commercial uses are less likely to be considered fair, though it's possible to monetize a video and still take advantage of the fair use defense, especially when it's transformative. Now, if any video using copyrighted material is transformative, it's going to be an educational or a, a video based on critique. I'm not giving my listeners the song to listen to. I'm giving them my thoughts on it, and I can't give my thoughts on it without quoting it or talking about it a little bit or describing it. Number two, the nature of the copyrighted material, maybe using material from primarily factual works or fictional works. This doesn't apply a ton. Then we get into number three, the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. That's a mouthful. Basically, I use just the lyrics. I don't play the song. I use about as tiny a portion of the song as is possible to be able to discuss these lyrics. Borrowing small bits of material is more likely to be considered fair use than borrowing large portions. However, even a small taking may weigh against fair use in some situations if it constitutes the heart of the work. Now, would anybody say that the lyrics minus the music quoted in small portions for the sake of education or talking about some deeper philosophical concept is the heart of the work. I could see it with some artists where the lyrics actually mean something, but for most pop songs, the record labels that are coming after me, definitely not. Number four, the effect of the use upon the potential market for the copyrighted work. Now, I will literally take this video down if somebody can comment a way that my videos are hurting the market for their copyrighted works and not making them more profitable. I explain the songs so that the fans can go deeper with it, experience more, feel more connected to the songs, to like them more. So if you're counting, guys, it's transformative. Number two doesn't really apply. I'm borrowing little tiny pieces of the original work and it's also helping their target market, so why am I still being targeted? Because it's absolutely ridiculous to make a claim on one of my videos in the first place, 90% of record labels usually back off after I dispute their claim, or they just let their claim expire after 30 days because they're too ashamed to admit that they're wrong. The other 10% say, hmm, no, I still think that's ours. Seriously? People, watch out. They are going to monetize your freaking conversations. Well, I respond to that 10% and tell them, no, I really think you're wrong. 3% of them let their claims expire, 3% of them say, oh yeah, you're actually right, and 3% of them still hold the line. Are you kidding me? Not only do I have to make these videos, market them, research them, edit them, all of this stuff, but I also have to defend them. Now some of you are like, only 3% of your videos are stolen, what are you complaining about? <laughs> first of all, my videos are not infringing on anyone's copyright, so it's wrong to claim them in the first place. This is a matter of principle. Are people who do reviews on songs and quote a lyric to back up why they think a song is terrible or good, not allowed to do that without being 
monetized or revenue shared by a record label? Am I not allowed to make money teaching poetry or giving my opinions on a song or movie? Is that the definition of fair use we wanna go with? Giving all of that power to record labels and conglomerates where they can control the public expression of our thoughts? Wanna imagine a dystopia? Imagine a world where you're not allowed to make fun of the lyrics from Katy Perry's Witness album. Have fun with that. Ugh. Now, as a quick disclaimer, out of my 260 odd videos, I have put up six that have a little bit of copyrighted content that I think maybe did go a little bit too far, or at least that I didn't fight because I didn't know reaction videos would be hit so hard, or I just wanted to see where the boundary was. I shut up and I didn't push it. That wasn't a battle I could win. But even still, I think including snippets of a music video for critique or better understanding or review should be allowed. One day. One day, and I still have to defend my right to protect my videos even when they don't watch the whole video. Seriously, every time they make a claim, they claim that they manually detected musical composition. I don't put their songs into my videos, I just quote the lyrics. They didn't watch the video, otherwise they would know that I didn't play their songs in my videos. Also, if they watch the video and 90% of them back off when I dispute their claims, they know they're doing something wrong. They're just mad mass claiming videos and trying to make money from a broken system. The copyright claim process is also kind of a mess. The record labels will say, hey, we want part of your video because we manually detected musical composition. I take manual detection to mean that they actually listen to and watch the video, which apparently is not the case. So then I come back and say, no, it's covered by fair use, and they have 30 days to respond. If they don't respond, their claim goes away. But if they say, no, we kind of want it, then I have another 30 days to respond back and say, no, I'm serious, like this is just my video. And basically still, they get to decide whether or not to listen to me. I like to imagine somebody at the record label waking up from a game of solitaire, looking at their inbox and seeing that I'm apparently dissatisfied with their decision. He turns over to the other guy next to him, slaps him and says, hey, I guess the first time you said that he owned the content in that video, I guess he was pretty serious about it and the whole time the process to do all of this is plastered with warnings about how I'm opening myself up to legal procedures here. I guess my request or takeaway from this is first of all, record labels, please whitelist me. I'm not a threat and all of my videos only help fans get more excited about your songs. My videos literally help you sell songs. You're already making money from my videos. And then I'd like to suggest that YouTube have more oversight in the copyright strike process. Especially if a channel gets hit as often as mine does, there should be like some bell that goes off that says, hey look, there's this guy who's getting hit with a lot of copyright strikes and the record labels are all backing off from it. Maybe we should go and see what's happening here. That's all I ask for. But guys, I'd love to hear what you think about this. Do you think I'm complaining about nothing or do you think that there's actually something here? Remember guys, support artists with deep lyrics and support record labels that don't beat up small time YouTubers. Thanks for watching.